All right. So in my big, long, conform workflow video, I made reference to a different way of using the difference mode comparison with the offline where you kind of verify and conform. So I figured I'd just show how to do it because um, it's a lot easier to deal with than bringing in the offline and putting it over the top track and switching, going to inspector and switching this back and forth. Uh, and Resolve gives you a really nice way of doing that. So let me show you how that works. It's kind of weird, but once you understand how it works, uh, you'll start really liking it. So I got this timeline that I imported. It's actually a revision of a previous shot. And these are like the new shots that supposedly I was supposed to just paste it over the old version. So I'm going to verify that with the offline MP4 that uh, I got from the editor. So first things first, find the offline reference. So here's another related workflow issue with this. My timeline starts at one hour. So for this particular workflow, you need to make sure that your reference movie matches the time code start of the timeline. In this case, it doesn't because it's an MP4. So, but what you can do before you import that reference, you right click on the reference here, choose first things you first thing you can do is add as offline reference clip. So this is the feature in Resolve that uh, we're going to be working with. It's called add as an offline reference clip. So it imports it into the media pool like any other clip, except it flags it as an offline. See this little checkerboard. It it doesn't. You can't really drag this in and edit with it. It's specifically used for offline reference purposes. But you can see the time code is still one hour, right? So we need to make sure that the starting time code matches the sequence that it's going to reference. So what you do is you right click on it, go clip attributes. And in clip attributes, you change the time code in this time code tab. And make sure you're at the head of the uh, clip there and just set the starting time code to match the time code of the sequence that you actually wanted to match up with. So in this case, it's one hour. And there's my time code started there. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is go to the actual timeline in the media pool. So this is the timeline I want to compare that reference with right here. So when you right click on that timeline and you go to the timelines menu, over here you have this option called link offline reference clip. So any clip that you bring into the media pool using that import as offline Reference clip will show up here, this menu here. So all you need to do is point it to the clip that you want to use as the reference clip. Okay. So you can't see anything that happened here. Although I believe there's a media, yeah, there's an actual metadata column for that. So you know that there's an associated reference clip link to that timeline. So that's kind of nice. So now what we're going to do is go back to the edit page. And... So if you don't have the two window panel up in your edit page, you click on this little icon up here to get the source and program viewers. So typically when you edit and resolve, it's just like any other NLE where you got the source viewer and then you've got the program viewer, right? So what's different in resolve is now that you've assigned that reference clip to the sequence, if you go down here to this little pull down menu here, you can, Choose this thing that says offline, and you can see the little checkerboard. If you switch the source viewer into offline mode, it loads the offline reference clip that's linked to the current sequence. And because the time code is ganged, actually, let's click on the three dots and go to show time code, show time code overlays. Uh, now the offline reference clip will show up. You can see it here, offline, and it shows the actual MP4 reference, and this is the actual sequence. So now they're ganged together because the time codes match, even though you've overridden it. So now what you can do is you can scrub through it. And so this will show you the offline. This will show you the current timeline. So you can see there that that's the offline. It's got the graphic. This doesn't have the graphic. So because there's none in it. So that's kind of neat. Um, so what the cool thing about this is you can actually now in this program viewer, Instead of going into inspector and you've got the reference movie on the top track and you have to keep going you know, like this, which is a big pain in the butt, right? If you're doing it often, what you can do here is you right click in the program viewer. And when you're in offline mode, you get these options here for how you want the offline reference to, uh, it's called a wipe mode in Resolve. So you can do a vertical wipe. In fact, let me go to, so this is the clip that is different. So no wipe is obviously nothing's happening. I just put a little blue grade here just to show that it's different from the offline. But if you right click in here, go vertical wipe, 
right? You can compare the offline versus the current timeline and do horizontal. And there's also these other weird ones called box. I'm not sure what use that is. But obviously the thing you want here is difference. So now, now you get that difference mode trick without having to go through all that trouble of importing the offline as a separate track on the top and going to inspector and all that kind of stuff. Now it's just here. So the beauty of this, right, is you can notice here that there are shortcuts associated with these. By default, they're not assigned. So what you need to do to assign you a keyboard shortcut to this is you go up to the DaVinci Resolve keyboard customization panel. And then close this up and go down to the, it would be under Edit Media Viewer here. And scroll down here and then find the thing that says Wipe Options. You twirl that open. And here you can define any kind of shortcut you want. Uh, obviously, it shouldn't be the same one as any other system shortcut or resolve shortcut uh, but I think it'll I think it'll tell you if uh, at least if it conflicts with an internal resolve shortcut um, what I like to do actually and this is an additional bonus tip that you do not have to do but because I remap keyboard shortcuts to everything I end up kind of running out of shortcuts sensible shortcuts too I'm, I have to do crazy things like put three modifier keys in a D so what I like to do is um, so I have this thing called a stream deck actually I got two of them actually I got three of them and it's just like an outboard USB keyboard that I can actually assign keyboard shortcuts and then the screens change depending on what application you're in. Like when I switch to Resolve, it always switches to this because I map kind of all my common shortcuts that I just want to have available at one push of one button. Um, so then I have this conform button. If I click tap that, it switches to all these shortcuts. It's a little blurry there, but you get the idea. So I actually map these keys to trigger hotkeys. So I don't even have to do the crazy, you know, four finger shortcut here. All I have to do is, let's close this. All I have to do is, okay, I want to go into difference mode. I tap that. It does that. If I want horizontal mode, I tap that. And if I want horizontal mode, tap that. So. This is great um, if you find yourself running out of shortcuts or actually it's just ergonomically it's, it's way better because it uh, you don't have to worry about running out of shortcuts. You can just create some crazy shortcut that you would never use your on the keyboard and just map it to one of these keys and, and it'll do whatever you want it to do. So you don't have to remember the shortcut too. It actually says it right on the screen. Edit page, wipe mode off, diff, horizontal invert. So... Um, that's just a little bonus tip. I figured I'd throw in there. Um, really helpful when conforming, though, because then your fingers don't get all <laughs> fucked up from doing all these repetitive things. So, but obviously you can, you know, you can just keep right click on the uh, thing and you get all the options. So no wipe is the equivalent of turning it off. And so when you're done, and you know, so that's great because then if you go into difference mode here, you can just scrub. Right. It accomplishes the same thing, but it's always available here and then when you're done with it you can switch back to source here in the source viewer and then it returns you back to the standard editorial mode so yeah this little pull down here in the source viewer and resolve is really it's it's a hidden feature if you don't know if you don't know about all these little options here there's even annotations here you can actually draw things on the screen and make a marker associated marker with that so you know do that and you can make a note about the color so that's really cool um and then obviously audio. So uh, that's just a little tip for the offline reference mode. So you don't have to keep dragging in reference movies like you would do in Premiere. Another reason why I love Resolve.